So at the start of this week, I was at a bit of a loss of what to make a video about. I have a lot of projects that I have in the works currently, but when I sat down to write something, I was just drawing a blank. So I did what I and many other content creators do when they're facing the dreaded blank piece of paper. I went to the comment section of some of my previous videos to look for ideas. And I started to notice that there was a lot of people requesting a similar type of video. Specifically, just in general, a, a broad idea of just different periods in Earth's history. I get a lot of comments just saying, talk about the Pleistocene, or talk about the Triassic, which I've already done quite a bit now or talk about the Devonian, okay? And all this kind of got me thinking, what if I do all of it? What if I made a series of videos where I basically broadly cover the lore of the Earth from the beginning all the way to the modern times? So that's what this video is gonna be the start of. And I know that starting at the very beginning, this video might not exactly rank in search, since it's probably gonna feel more like an astronomy or geology video than a paleontology video. But eventually, I'll be able to say that I've given a timeline to Earth's history that I can reference in future videos. And for this one, I wanna start with a little bit of context. And then I'll be starting at the beginning, then going from there. And this doesn't mean that this is what I'm going to be doing every single week. Just something that I'll be adding a video to every so often. Basically just whenever I either want to, or any time that I can't think of anything else to talk about, I'll plug one of these in. But with all that out of the way, let's get started with a little bit of context. A little something to lay out the chapters of this story. So before we really get into this, I think I should probably explain a few things for those who don't already know how geologic time is measured. The history of the Earth spans roughly 4,540,000,000 years. This is an absolutely unfathomable amount of time. So to be able to help wrap our heads around something so vast, we've organized the history of the Earth into several different chronological units, or geochronological units, if you will. The smallest unit of measurement that we'll be using is ages. Although there isn't a hard and fast rule to this, ages are generally measured in up to millions of years. Epochs are normally measured in several million years, Periods are normally measured in tens of millions of years. Eras are normally 50 to several hundred million years. And finally, eons normally cover half a billion years or more. Now, as we move forward through time, you'll start to notice that I start covering smaller and smaller sections of the timeline. This is because the farther back in time you go, the less complete our geological record is. For example, the Cretaceous period lasted from 145 to 66 million years ago, so roughly 79 million years. This is a longer span of time than the entire Cenozoic era. This is because the Cenozoic is chopped up into smaller measurements since we have so much more data to identify if a span of time is different enough to warrant a division. Well that and the fact that the Cenozoic is not actually over yet. But this is just something to keep in mind while I tell you all the story of where everything on Earth came from. And to start that story off, I'm going to have to go all the way back. This story begins with a giant molecular cloud swirling around the Milky Way galaxy around 4.6 billion years ago. Yeah, I did say I was going all the way back, didn't I? Wait. Oh God! I've gone so far back in time that I'm an ethidium bromide molecule. I'm literally a building block of life. No! As the cloud spun, gravity started to make the heaviest materials gather in the center, while the rest started to form what's called a protoplanetary disk. And as you might have guessed, eventually the mass of ultra heavy material became our sun, and the dust and particles that made up the disk started to form the newborn planets and other celestial bodies. And during this time, our planet was born. Originally just another unassuming world floating around a new star. And currently, Earth is about as far away from being recognizable as it ever will be. In fact, it probably looked more like Mustafar from Star Wars. So hellish was our future home that this entire eon was given the name the Hadean. And yeah, it's actually named after the Greek god of the underworld, James Woods. It was literally hell on Earth in the most literal sense for the majority of the first 600 million years. 
And to make things even worse, because there was so much other stuff out in the rest of the solar system forming, there was a lot more objects crossing paths in the form of impacts. And sometime within the first hundred million years, the Earth is believed to have had an impact that would change the course of its future. Around this time, the Earth was starting to cool. However, it was still a hellacious ball of rock with very little chance of life ever forming. The average global temperature was around 230 degrees Celsius or 446 degrees Fahrenheit. However, many of the denser materials were starting to solidify. There was one element that was only able to condense to liquid form because its temperature to form solid was down at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. A compound of hydrogen and oxygen that would become the single most abundant ingredient in the recipe of life, water. And the only reason why it was even able to form a liquid is because the atmosphere was 27 times as dense as it is today. But how did that atmosphere even get there? And what's more, how do we even have the tides? There was no way for the tides to form because there was no object close by to create a gravitational pull needed for it. That is, until a stray planet straight up t-boned us. Yeah, I know it sounds like some Star Trek grade stuff right now, but the most plausible theory to the moon's origins is that it was formed from an impact between the Earth and a planet that we now call Thea. It's believe that part of Thea remained in our orbit as some of it was ripped away and added to the big ball of clay that we call home. And the vaporized particles from this impact enveloped the globe. It was a combination of this with the helium and oxygen that had been slowly leaking away from the planet for the first hundred million years that we believe comprised our planet's earliest atmosphere. Not one that we could currently breathe, mind you, but this was the seed where everything really got started. So there we have it. Just like that, the stage is set. Even though the Earth is still highly unstable geologically, there's a moon in the night sky, an atmosphere of mostly CO2, sulfur, and helium, and a tiny bit of liquid water in the lowest parts of our rocky world. It's starting to really feel like home. But by the end of the Hadean, things were really starting to cool off a lot more. And this seems like a pretty good place to leave the story off. Because honestly, there's still a ton we don't know about this time. There's only a very small handful of locations where rocks that are this old even exist. Because right where we're standing right now at the end of the Hadean, there's still 4 billion years that we still have to travel to get back to our time. And rocks just don't last that long on a geologically active world. So I hope you enjoyed this first chapter in the history of our planet. If you did, give this video a like. I'm really looking forward to continuing this story as well as continuing to make other videos about all different stuff. Maybe in the next video I might actually get to cover something that's, you know, alive. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to sit next to this hydrothermal vent and try to figure out how to turn back to normal. Take care everybody.